I wanted to show you is this is the denture invested lower half then I put use a GC LT putty that's a polyvinyl siloxane putty uh, it's two part uh, also known as addition putty because it's five scoops of one and five scoops of the other. That's what I'm using, five scoops to cover it. You'll notice a couple little things here. I always make sure that I put the, the, cusp, the cusp, cusp tips, hard to say sometimes, cusp tips uh, through uh, the putty just slightly so you can see them. This will give it a rigid, um, a rigid uh, stationary point or foundation so that when I pour the, I'm going to put this on and then pour stone up uh, the secondary cap. Uh, you'll notice I got little balls of a, uh, what I had some left over. I put that on there. I also poked some, a few holes in and around for um, retention so that the putty doesn't pull out of the stone that I'm going to pour on the upper half of the cap. Anyway, this is also the way you do just standard relines, at least how I do them in my lab. If you've done it right, when you close it, um, basically you should still have stone around the areas. It's going to be a little tight because this is a bigger than normal uh, denture uh, for this flask. And um, you'll, you make sure that your, um, we would call it metal to metal if it was a metal flask. So we'll say it's plastic to plastic because this is a plastic flask. And then um, what I'll do is because this is tight in this area here, I'll pre-pour some stone in and around here uh, so that it locks in under before I put the cap on and then screw the bolts down because there's bolts that go to hold the cap on and actually you pour these molds through the through the top of the cap where there's two holes will run in. Well I want to assure that I get enough stone all the way around so I'll pour a little stone in there before I uh, put the cap on and screw it down final then I'll pour up uh, pour in the holes until it's completely filled. All right. Uh, so I've covered mostly everything. Oh, something else, you know, always make sure that your um, denture and the putty is below this edge of the flask. Um, it's a pretty rudimentary thing, but it's tougher, it's tougher to get the, the models below and the teeth below this, this area, this land area, uh, with the micro, microwave flask. Just make sure that when it's when it's inserted and you put the lid on to double check to make sure it's low enough you leave yourself enough room also to pour okay all right so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pour this and then I'm gonna um, I'm gonna microwave it for one minute at 500 watts once it's set up to soften it and then I'm gonna open it up and then I'm gonna wash out pull out most of the wax wash out whatever little wax is in there and then I'll show you what the mold looks like all right all right GCLT flask, I'm sorry, GCFRP flask, fiber reinforced plastic, that's the flask. That's the one I like to use, and it works like a charm. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I wanted to get back here. Next step on this whole thing is, as I showed you in the last video, was about um, encasing your upper half of the flask in putty as I've done here. This is the GCLT putty. And then poured a cap onto it. And then once that's occurred, then I take and I will remove, open up the flask and remove the denture. And in this case, this denture had porcelain teeth with the exception of two teeth. There was two teeth right here. A central and a uh, bicuspid, second bicuspid, that ended up being repairs that were done sometime, sometime down the line. Well, I cut those out by hand. If this had been an all uh, acrylic uh, denture teeth, then I would have cut them out individually and placed them like I placed these two. But I only had to do it with two of these because the rest of them were uh, porcelain teeth. And you find mostly these people with the porcelain teeth are the ones that want to keep these dentures uh, with the teeth because the teeth haven't really worn that much. Of course, they did have a few pop-offs, but by and large, uh, most of the teeth remain. I cleaned off as much bacteria as I could, cleaned them off, steamed them off, and got them cleaned up. And then I heated up the base and uh, took each tooth off individually, being careful not to bend the pins or break the pins. 
then I just place them in the mold and of course because I wrap putty on that nice wax up the putty itself reflects that all the nice contours and everything so I place those all in individually I'll take and I'll treat the two denture teeth, uh, plastic denture teeth, with Palabond before I pack the cases. But now I will mix up my acrylic and I will pack and microwave cure this and then I will show you uh, the results of that microwave curing. Again, it'll only take 48 minutes, 3 minutes in the microwave oven, 25 minutes to cool on the bench, and another 20 minutes in a lukewarm water, and I'm ready to break it out and finish it. I'm trying to think if there was anything else I should mention. I don't believe so. Just make sure all of the teeth are in back down into the intaglios tight. Um, of course, these are uh, have a nice stone index because, as you recall, I, I kind of smoothed off the occlusals and the incisals so that I had a nice indexing into the stone. Nothing should really move. And I'll take great care to pack process this. In other words, I, uh, first thing I'll do is I'll do several trial packs, not to overfill the mold, but to fill the mold to completion, and then I'll close it final. Hopefully that won't disturb anything. I don't believe it will. And then uh, I'll run it through its cure, and then uh, I'll come back and uh, we'll revisit this and see how it looks. and point out any deficits or any kind of pointers that I can give you that might help you not have any of those deficits. Uh, otherwise, I'll be back. All right, so I just wanted to show you the end result. Uh, what we did is we rebased or jumped this denture, had it invested in GCLT putty, um, invested the case, as I said, uh, processed it and then popped it out. You'll see some pictures as I speak. Um, and what we get is a original shade uh, rebase. Has all the features that the uh, other denture had, or uh, the denture had prior to the rebasing. All we did was save the teeth um, and use the teeth in the same positions. The um, I had a couple people ask me as I was showing this, you know, I showed the first two steps, uh, part one and part two. I had a couple people email me and go, why didn't I, like, festoon this and make it look all fancy and stuff? And as I alluded to before, this patient wanted this denture uh, fixed because they like this denture. And so I have to make sure that they get that denture pretty much back the way it came, which is with all the tooth positions, all the nasty tooth replacements, and there are several, um, and uh, also the smooth, shiny character of the actual base. The last thing in the world I need to do is uh, want to spread my uh, my creative wings, so to speak, and like color characterize this and put contours in it and all kinds of stuff that this originally didn't have. Because this patient, more than most, is probably also very, um, his mind is already set on getting exactly what he had except just freshened up. And that's exactly what I did. So I basically just freshened it up. Took and, and uh, just recontoured the way it was after I removed all the gnarly stuff. And basically nothing's moved, nothing's changed except the acrylic base. And of course a reline impression which was taken at the onset uh, so that we could rebase the case and use the same teeth with new acrylic. Anyway, uh, th that was to answer those who asked me how come I didn't contour it and make it all fancy and stuff. I know that there have been some articles that have been published by some authors who'd like to take the denture and like fancy it all up after the fact but after 30 years of being in this business I can tell you that if I was to have made this any fancier than it is and I probably would have been subjecting myself to possibly a rejection of what I did and so uh, rather than go through all the mental gymnastics to try to do something better in that regard, all I'm concerned with is fulfilling the patient's expectations that they're going to get back exactly what they had, except it's just going to be new. New in the fact that there'll be new acrylic. It won't be all broken and all the other stuff. So, you know, when you're doing this stuff, just keep in mind, you know, what you're trying to deliver is something better, of course, 
but at the same time uh, you have to remember that just because you want to be artistic uh, doesn't necessarily um, fit into the patient's mental picture. I'll give you an example. It would be like if a patient had a pink and shiny denture and then you made them a, re, uh, a new denture and it was pink with rugae and they don't like the rugae because it's not like what they had. Or if you don't move a tooth a certain way. I mean certain uh, patients are very particular. Obviously this patient is very particular in the fact that they wanted to use the same basic denture teeth um, to uh, to jump the case to uh, rebase the case so I know their mindset is one of they probably are not going to accept anything too different than what they've already gotten so you know there's a couple lessons there a I showed you how to do a jump if you didn't do it that way and uh, be a little bit about mindset oh here's another thing remember this tooth here and I'll show you a picture of it this tooth here I had nicked with the Robinson brush so what I did was I took um, A2 uh, self-curing resin and I patched it and, and then um, and, and, and took and smoothed it out and then I uh, applied OptiGlaze clear to seal the whole thing and I won't have any issues with that. This tooth here of course was another replacement tooth um, that was in acrylic um, Unfortunately, when you start to polish everything and clean it up, all of a sudden the differences in the shades start to show up. It's nothing I did. It was already semi-different already, but because all these other teeth were so nasty and dirty, it didn't um, it didn't stick out as much. But you can see now that there's a little bit of, there's a little bit more of a difference. Nothing I can do there, folks. I mean, this is part of it. And of course, you always have to look at things in the shade because that's really most of the time. Um, the teeth are shaded uh, from the top. You're not getting light from all over unless they had a hole in the back of their head. And so, you know, by holding it up, you can shade the gingival third and kind of get an idea. And at that point, it doesn't look any different. So that's it. Uh, done with it and out the door. 48 minutes to cure, and then I began finishing. Have a great day.